brought to you by Mr. Pro's TV, streaming from Tempe, Arizona. And we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, Jordan Nelson here, host of Real Estate Pros on Lister Pros TV. Today we have in our studio Chuck Malone of JK Realty. Hi, Jordan. Thank you so much, Chuck, for taking time out of your day and joining me on Real Estate Pros. Hey, it's hot out there. Hey, it, it is nice and warm, and it, it nice seems and like cool here. <laughs> it's cool inside. It but is. Yeah, our photographers have been sweating out there. We get all these uh, random pictures of them trying to stay cool or keep their gear cool, and uh, yeah. I know. I have <laughs> one of your guys going out tomorrow morning to do a nice new land parcel listing for me. So he's gonna make it look really good. Take yeah. advantage of all those <laughs> mountains around you. Oh, awesome, yeah, I think, yeah, I did see that. You, mm -hmm. you sent it through me. That's a, a, a land lot out in- A couple a of them Is actually. Is it AJ? AJ, yeah. yeah. Off Superstition and Royal Palm. So it'll be nice view of the Goldfield Mountains and Superstitions and- so talk to us a little bit about that lot since we're talking about it. Yeah, is it, is it like a residential? It is. It's actually zoned for 1.25 uh, acres. So if you got five, then you get four of those on there. And um, I have two lots back to back. So there's 10 acres. And then there's another uh, property very close to us that we want to bring in and maybe have just a wonderful PAD project there. Sure. So I'm headed down to the city of Apache Junction to talk to them and the planning department about how can we really make this uh, highest and best use and take advantage of all these great uh, views and uh, improve the property. So Absolutely. So on this show, we, we uh, obviously get to know our, uh, our customers a little bit better and sure. allow you to, to, sh to share your story a little bit. So give yeah. us a little bit of background on real estate. How long have you been in the business? Uh, we actually have a couple pictures we'll show uh, during the show, <laughs> maybe if they're related to what you're talking about. But uh, yeah, there's actually, uh, I, I guess, just quickly describe, uh, you know, how long you've been in the business and you're at JK Realty and, 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 and why you uh, are with JK Realty. Well, I started back in 1974 and um, soon uh, opened my own office in downtown Mesa. It was just me and uh, I had my name on the door. That was cool had a receptionist out front. So there was about 20 of us in the building that shared that reception, a receptionist. And um, from there, I um, formed, uh, co-founded uh, Old West uh, Homes, which was a company right here in Gilbert that uh, we founded and uh, co-owned that for many years. Uh, went through the 21% interest rate uh, times if you will oh yeah yeah it's a little different today right a little different <laughs> people don't understand i had a seven percent mortgage on a on a an investment property and i said i'll never refinance this never be able to right seven percent yeah yeah and um and so here we are you know three or below so the, that i i joined uh, i i became uh, an agent uh, with one of the local uh, agents at the time, Clark Halls, and uh, part-time, <clears throat> and Clark was kind enough, <clears throat> excuse me, kind enough to get me started, and I left a very wonderful job uh, out of ASU, and I was going to go with Marion Laboratories, and then I decided, let me just, I'm going to, I'm going to go with this other company, they're local, and uh, I became a sales agent for them. Did that for about five years. They just wouldn't promote me to management and I wanted to have my own deal. You know, there's just something inside us, uh, at least for me, that said, I, I wanna be the captain of my own ship. Right. I'm not so sure that was a great idea as I look <laughs> back on it, but I, I would never change a thing. And so I, I uh, and I loved real estate. I'm in love with real estate. I love what, what it brings, you know, I mean, the, just the opportunity for wealth and the opportunity for service. And if you can do both of those, what a, what a marvelous vocation. And so that became my passion. Mm -hmm. And so my, my little office was about the size of this uh, sound booth. And I had a big stack of back then that people had to call you. Right, they didn't right, have right, uh, right. they didn't have information age, so they had to call me. And when they called, I would say, well, "If you'll just stay right there, 
I'll bring my book to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you in the car. And then I said, and I'll never let you out. And, and, and we'll become best friends. And that's how I started, just one person at a time. And uh, it evolved into a red carpet realty franchise. We were uh, one of the top producing red carpet agencies at the time. I grew to about 50 associates. And um, then we had a home building company that, that uh, we supported and, uh, and grew with. And it was just a marvelous time in our lives. So you, you've been, a, uh, you know, you've been in real estate for what, almost? 46. 46 years? This year, is my 46. 46 years. Yeah, so you, you've, been, you've been full-time yep, real estate. For right 40. here. Oh, all here? Right here in the east. Well, back then it was Metro Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was before freeways. So in 2020, fast forwarding, what are uh, some uh, big uh, business drivers for you? Or do you, do you have a good sphere of influence from having been in the business for so long? I'm just very blessed to, to have <laughs> that. I, I love people. I, I do my very best to stay in touch. I'm learning new technologies. I get ev up every morning uh, with the, this passion to, to be better than I was yesterday and learning how to connect with people and how to uh, solve their problems. You know, I based my business a little different maybe than most. I'm, I'm client driven. I'm not the buyer's broker, I'm not the seller, you know, enlisting agent. I, I am the client's uh, solution. You know, right, like I say, right now I have an attorney client of mine, I've helped them get into their own home and, and I've helped some of their clients in divorce cases and that sort of thing. And um, they call me and said, hey, you know, we've got a family parcel of land in Apache Junction. And I said, wonderful, let's go, let's go uh, market some land. And because I'm development oriented, I, I love to see what could come of that vacant sure. land. Yeah. And so I'm putting together those kinds of strategies for them instead of just marketing it as a five acre parcel in Apache Junction. Right, right. I'm gonna market with something that has some real income potential. Sure, absolutely. So let's let's talk a second about uh, your view, you have a wrapped. It looks like is it a Nissan Sentra? I'm a car guy. Oh, yeah, that I think that was a uh, that one right. Oh, this one right there. Yeah, that's yes, a, that's a yes. Sentra. That's J that was JK. That's their their um, little mobile. <clears throat> I would take it around to listings and open houses and things of this nature. But they, when we do um, uh, open houses, that'll show up. And at one time, they had quite the the. Um, uh, gathering of, of photography and and they had in-house um, uh, I'd watch it on my iPad you know and we'd do professional uh, videos for me to just kind of help me get started in this industry again I, that's how I joined JK I'd had my own agency for a number of years mm -hmm. and then I um, again followed one of my clients needs they needed a, a um, uh, gas station built and so I, this is many years ago, I learned how to build a gas station. And then that followed up with another one and another one and another one. Then I would buy the, the land and I'd put it together. And then I put five APM, AM, PMs together for that. Oh, I wow. helped, helped Arco redesign some of their internal work. I mean, it just, huh. one just leads to another. And sure. eventually uh, the Hopi tribe called and said, hey, we're up here in Tuba City. We, we'd love to develop this land. What can you do for us? I spent a full year there. Wow. Yeah, so I just go where my so you've client. you've had a lot of different little micro niches. I it have. seems like you've, you've done like home building and I, then the niche of building gas stations. Obviously, I'm sure there's some complexities to getting approved and being able to oh. run that kind of business. And there's I've, a lot of regulation as well. I was right in the cusp of uh, the, the federal commissions mm -hmm. uh, EPA in development and uh, it was before they even knew what it was or what the rules were and so I became very involved in that for my clients on uh, getting started in the EPA and regulations keeping them safe and out of jail because back then they and they still are they have some bite to them if you're violating their, their policies and so um, uh, I cleaned up a lot of gas stations over my over those uh, 10 years is about how long I was doing that for them, whatever it takes. Sure, and uh, we know that the business has changed quite a significantly since you started, what, 46 years ago? Mm -hmm. So what, what advice would you give to a brand new agent that's starting today for them to, to find success? You know, Jordan, it's, it's really, it's timeless advice. It's back to, uh, 
don't get discouraged for one thing. Um, set your goals. What do you want to, this business to do for you? And if it's all about you, I promise you it's not going to work. So I try to, those that I'm able to mentor and to help along, I try to get them whole first. I, I ran for, right out of a beautiful job with a salary and a, and a, a, a sales commission and a, a car and expense account into my own business. And it was marvelous in one side and it was frightening. We didn't dare take a break for that first year. Doubled my income in the first year. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and we, we just couldn't take a break. So if you're going to do that, plan on giving it your all. And uh, I try to tell people, you know, uh, um, lifestyles are created uh, during the, the evening. You During the day, you maintain what you're you know, kind of a entry level to lifestyle, but at nighttime and weekends, that's when you create your future. Mm -hmm. And so I try to live by that. And so I've, uh, I chose real estate. Uh, I believe I wanted it to, I wanted the freedom it offered me. And then I wanted to be able to do other things along with it. And, and my family is very important to me. My church service is very important to me. Um, I, I've, I think the Lord gave me real estate so that I'd have enough trials to to write a book. <laughs> oh yeah, and you, you actually gave me the book. So let's talk a little bit about the book. It's called The Sweetness of Trial by Charles P. Malone. Here That's we go. Me. Yeah, there we are. Here I'll try to put it in focus there. There we go. We got it. <laughs> well, so what inspired the, you to write a, write the book? It I will just tell you this. Um, trial is not your enemy. It may feel like um, punishment, mm -hmm. but it's not. Trial is your ally. Trial will open doors for you that will never be opened otherwise. That's the difference. And if you could get that attitude, and in real estate, you will have trial. It will be there just because it's the most emotionally charged uh, event for people. Their life savings oftentimes are invested in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been many losses because of it, out of your control. So you just have to look at trial, and when it happens, you have to be able to say, what am I to do with this? And so my next book, uh, I've written four actually, oh, wow. uh, on, on a treadmill at the gym uh, every morning while I exercise. And I, these thumbs have arthritis because on my little iPad, I just, I write, and I have my headphones on, I'm listening to music or whatever, I'm writing, and, and I never thought that that's how this would all develop. My very, f for, for this one, I had a, you know, a stack of books that I reference books that I thought I needed to you know, read and include all of those, and, and it didn't work out that way. It was mostly just what's inside you and put it on paper and try to make that work for you. So it's been a in you know 15 years I've written four of those and so I have the sequel to this one that's that I've been uh, working on that's just about ready and it's called Winning Through Trial and that I, that's where I pr uh, provide winning ways on how to get through and how to develop yourself and how not to just endure trial but to become better and to grow and so that's where my writing came from it was uh, it was it do through period of depression caused I think but well my own weakness I allowed it to happen mm. it didn't happen to me it hap happened because I beat myself up enough for failure and uh, we'd had a, a great time but when 21 percent interest rates uh, hit and people won't close on their homes um, you just <clears throat> it's a difficult industry sure Put, put it can be one. <clears throat> excuse me. It can be wonderful, and it can be very, very difficult. And so uh, I was looking for different ways to reinvent myself. And uh, so I'd sold out the company, and and um, um, I was just looking for other things. And I discovered that um, this about the same time uh, I went up to Tuba City and and spent a year there. When I came back, it was during 2008, and there was nothing going. And I was two years, I, I found out that, that there is indeed age discrimination. Um, I, I went two years without even getting an interview. 
even with all the experience that I've had g- uh, gained during those mm. years. And so I, I started looking for other ways. I knew what was going on in residential. I was, I just wasn't sure I wanted to get into that mm-hmm. and be an attorney, you know, and go through all of that. And be, and yet that's where I ended up going back to, and it was a wonderful blessing. But I, I did a, I answered an ad for a copywriter for a national magazine or for a regional magazine, and he answered me back. The editor answered me back, and said, uh, "Well, I kind of like, uh, I like what you say, and send me something." I said, "Well, I haven't written anything. I, you want me to show you? I mean, I make up my own contracts. I can send you one of those." He said, "No, write something." So I wrote a kind of a spiritual uh, experience I had, and I sent that over to him. And I thought, well, if nothing else, this will help him get God in his life or something. I can right, at least right, share right. that. And he wrote back and said, oh, I like, I like that. Uh, send me some ideas. And so I sent him ideas. He said, oh, no, none of those are all taken. He says, I was, I'm from Yuma. If, if you'll go to Yuma and cover the Yuma Lettuce Days, festival <laughs> i didn't know that yuma was famous for their lettuce and <clears throat> i went met with those uh, w- met with some historians there got all the details took pictures brought back a head of lettuce put it up in my in my um, uh, wind, uh, in my window in the kitchen window and took um, uh, pictures and jordan my photo was the main cover and our my little article was the lead article in the magazine. Wow. And that led to, well, I ought to send in some other articles. I wrote a few others. And the, actually, the article I wrote for him, I sent it in to a, a publisher. And they, uh, they had a, an online um, uh, magazine, and they published it. And I sent in another, and they published it. And I sent in another. And I sent in, every one that I sent in was published. And I got thinking, maybe I have a career. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no money in it, unfortunately. Right, right. So that was kind of my outlet for, because I have passion and I love to put it in writing. Sure. So I've written a couple of fiction books and I've written, you know, I've got a ch- ch- uh, child's book. I'm just trying to try different genres to see what fits for me. Because it's something I enjoy doing. That's my hobby. Sure. So I divide my time between that and my church and my family. And but I find that that's very impressive. I think a lot of people just have trouble even finishing a book, reading a book, right? That's, but to actually write a book and, and the way in which you do write books while you're on your treadmill. Like, I think that's fun. that's interesting because I've heard different stories by different writers of how what's their creative space. I mean, uh, so on a treadmill on yourself, you, like you can come up with a multi-page book right. or even four books or however many. Yeah. Um, so that that's very impressive. Well, it, w- it wasn't meant to do anything other than take advantage of my time. And I try to be very time accountable. And uh, much my, it, it's a curse as much as it is a blessing. Sure. So let's talk about real estate. Yeah. Um, we know that there's, I don't know, however many thousands of agents and more getting in the market every single week here in Arizona. Uh, what sets you apart from uh, all the other agents out in uh, this area? Why would somebody want to hire you versus the agent down the street or two doors down because there's so many? <laughs> I think that uh, if people really knew the potential for harm that, uh, that not having someone with their eyes open through a transaction uh, could could happen, they would choose someone like me. I've got the age, I've got the energy, I, I've got the the foresight and the a different perspective. I, I know this area. Uh, I knew it before it had uh, freeways, and I've seen the growth. I have a feeling there's something that experience brings and that you'll gain as you get more that th- there's a perspective and a feel it's a heartbeat and you you know when the red flags go up i mean i can tell immediately that here's a deal here's a here's a home that's got a few red flags in it i can see what's going to be our push and shove uh, to get this home sold i'm hoping that my client will be open minded to get some of these things done ahead of time so i try to prepare each home with my client to to be received in the very best light. And so having home building experiences and having um, you know, the opportunity to walk people through new builds 
and I'm very comfortable with that. I've proven to be a, a great asset to them as they, they go into a sales office and they're uh, welcomed by the sales agent, but they don't understand that the sales agent is not uh, working for them. Sure. So, and, so what is the area in, in which you cover here in, in Phoenix? Well, I'm mostly now East Valley because that's where my sphere really has, has been built. Sure. It started here. and. I, back then, back in the day, I would have to drive over to Phoenix. I would drive to all the communities, uh, and I still do. Mm. You know, I'm still, I'm, there's a relocation um, person that's in central Phoenix, and I'm helping them find a, a, a property that's close to them, takes advantage of the freeway system, gets him to work on time. So if somebody watching this is interested in having you help them either buy a home, sell a piece of land, or sure. develop maybe a gas station. Whatever. <laughs> well, whatever. How, how, do, how do people get a hold of you? Well, you know, <clears throat> I'm on Facebook, <clears throat> and I have, um, uh, I have uh, obviously, you can call me on the phone, and uh, you'll probably post that on the screen, or it's on my, my anyway, it's 480-329, yep, 7489, and it's uh, Chuck J.K realty az at gmail.com um, i mean you can see it up there if uh, or um, really the best way to contact me is just give me a text on that uh, 480-329-7489 <coughs> and we can connect awesome and i'm online just <coughs> just uh, uh search for chuck malone jk realty and Sweet. you'll find me Awesome. Well, thank you so much, thank Chuck, you. for uh, taking time out of your busy day and joining me on Real Estate Pros. This is wonderful. And we will see you guys on the next episode.